Hello and welcome to this new Let's Play series where we are going to play through Queen's Wish 2 The Tormentor, which is a classical old school RPG developed by Spiderweb, which is basically a one man studio by Jeff Vogel. Uh, he has some assistance by his wife and buys some external stuff like graphics and sound for the game, which is also a bit problematic, but we will get to that in a bit. The release of the game is on the 24th of August, which yes, is in the future. This is um, a press release, but this is already version 1.0, so I don't expect that there will be many changes until release, maybe a bug fix patch or anything like that. So yes, this is the final version. However, the first hours of gameplay were already available uh, via the demo version, which was only available during the Steam Next Fest. However, as Spiderweb usually does, I expect that there will also be a demo version after release of the game. So if you're looking into buying this game, you find a link down in the video description <laughs> to the uh, Steam page. I think it's also available on GOG, but I think there might also be a demo version available. I can't guarantee that, but just so you know. This is, of course, uh, not a sponsored video. I got the Steam key for free, but just so you know. Some uh, background information about me and Spiderweb. I'm playing all Spiderweb games since 2011, with the first uh, game being released on Steam, which was Everdon, and then shortly thereafter, Avernum Escape from the Pit. The first games, I liked them quite a bit, um, and I would recommend the first Avernum to everyone. Escape from the Pit, not the very first, but Esca uh, Avernum Escape from the Pit is, uh, from uh, my perspective, is still the best game. Uh, I think the quality dropped a little bit. I wasn't super satisfied with Queen's Wish and I think Geneforge, which was the last game they released, um, I think that one was actually the worst game so far from these which I played and I only gave it a mediocre score. Um, still not a bad game, but uh, still. You can find a Let's Play on Queen's Wish on this channel as well as the review. I also did Let's Plays of many of the other Spiderweb games, but unfortunately these are on the German channel in German only. And this includes a um, playthrough of Queen's Wish. However, in case there are any references to the previous game, I will tell you of course anyways um, as far as I still remember. And this is actually also one of the special features of A Queen's Wish that you, for the first time in all the Spiderweb games, you can actually import your decisions from the first game. I don't know how much impact that has, but uh, just so you know. And something I also want to mention um, right away in case you are playing the game and want to import your decisions from the first game. The code which you need to enter includes J's which look pretty much the same as I's. So in case your code is not accepted, please make sure that you type in J's instead of I's. All right, so just a, a few more infos on, um, on the game before we start with the let's play. Um, the game was um, funded, also, I mean, he probably could have done it without the Kickstarter project, but he uh, did a Kickstarter project in August 2021, and he uh, gathered uh, 60, well, almost 66,000 US dollars. Unfortunately, that was not enough for the stretch goal, which was 100,000 US dollars for a professional sound design. So, and this is one big issue of all his games, he is not using any music throughout the games. They only have music in the like main menu, in the intro and the outro. And the music used there is, is not even um, original or royalty free. So it's just a licensed product, which I mean is fine for the regular player, but that means that I cannot use this original music in these Let's Plays because YouTube doesn't like it, because they are licensed by some, someone else. So um, the music I'm going to, or you are going to hear in this Let's Play is royalty-free music by uh, Kevin McLeod in Competech. So just so you know, the music you hear is external and it's not from the game. And of course, that also means that, for example, when the combat starts, it will not switch or anything like that. All right, lastly, <laughs> 
If you're watching this video later on, you might want to check out the links in the video description because there you find a playlist with all the Let's Play entries I did so far. So it's easier than to just search all the different episodes one by one. Uh, with the playlist, you can just watch them all using this playlist, obviously. And um, I'm also doing a review once the game finished, which at this point when I'm recording this intro, it's still a long way ahead. But um, yeah, you can check on my channel for a review as well if you're uh, watching this a little bit later. And with that, let's get into the game. And here we are in the main menu. And before we start the game, we will have a quick look into, well, just uh, the instructions there is like, well, pretty much a manual if you want to read all that. Uh, I mean, I played, as I mentioned, all the other games, so I suspect that most of the stuff will be the same. Um, the settings, and there is some stuff you might want to change, like the keyboard settings. They had like F5 was quick use 1, F9 was quick use 5, and quick save and quick load were some weird keys so i changed that to the standard f5 for saving f9 for loading um also unfortunately there's no split into music and background sounds background sounds in this case also includes the music so i set that off but during the game i will turn it on again so it's just that um, we don't have the music in the main menu now what you hear as i mentioned is from Co uh, kevin mcleod all right and uh, regarding the other stuff, we will see in-game whether or not we want to change that. All right, we start a new game. And... Cordano. There we can't do anything there. And the picture is dependent on yeah, the settings here. Well, it's, it's a, a nice selection, I think. You will find some faces which which are okay. It's not like um, in Arcanum, I think there were just faces which looked nice from an artistic style, but I didn't want to be either of them, so <clears throat> that's also an issue. Um, some darker color, extra details, okay. Let's build a new Jesus. Ah, oh, that's also not bad. Yeah, maybe that's not as Jesus-like as something like that. So, um, I will take that one. <laughs> Alright, I think that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's fine. This is a bit, a bit too young, but uh, the other one is a bit too old. So, I mean, that's fine with me. Okay, alright. And then, of course, the highest difficulty, Torment. The ultimate challenge for the Warriors of Haven. You will need to use every trick and fully utilize every ability to defeat the nasty enemies arranged, arrayed against you. Your foes have more abilities, health, and do more damage. Your spells and abilities can damage your own characters. Yeah, as always, I always uh, use um, choose the highest difficulty setting. I think that's the best way to learn all the mechanics and so on. The Empire of Haven rules over an eighth of the known world. Queen Charon III rules Haven absolutely. Her oldest son will become king someday. Her oldest daughter is Sharon Sage and most trusted advisor. Queen Charon III, your mother. But your mother is ill. She has forced you to join in maintaining the Empire. It is the price you pay for a life in luxury. She has spent the last two years sending you all over doing jobs large and small. Sometimes diplomacy, sometimes battle. She has a list of tasks and it is endless. Your brother and you have a final journey together. You are in the Rokaya, land of wild warriors and the birthplace of your father. All part of the family business, just a simple bit of diplomacy until you are awake early one morning if you have finished Queen's Wish the Conqueror you might have a code to enter record what you did that game if you don't have it don't worry you can still play Queen's Wish with no problems okay I'm going to enter my code um, I need to find it first all right 
and there is what I mentioned before and also an issue is that you cannot copy paste I have a code to enter so now um, I'm going to enter that let me quickly pause it all right so that is my code from the last game and um, the third letter here is a J and um, with this code I uh, you, uh, yeah, this is pretty much what I did back there. You achieved total victory over the Nissa. You told Sutter that you should be king. Um, I think that might, might be the inter more interesting um, uh, entry. I also finished the game with just uh, saying that I wish to, to serve my, the, the Empire. You asked the Queen to be given the throne. Yeah, you won great victories on Sacramentum. So it might be just very... Um, yeah, not very detailed uh, about y the choices or things you did, like you achieved a lot, it's, I mean, it's not saying much, it doesn't go into details about what you did with which faction, so, but just to give a little bit of a recap what happened in the first one, so basically there was an, uh, I mean, we, that was shown in the intro, we are the son of the queen and we were sent by the queen to some island empire thing, so an outpost and of course this was pretty much in ruins and we needed to, to reunite that and there were three different factions in like the different um, directions, we started in the middle and in each direction um, there was basically a one faction and the rebel group and you could decide either to support the faction which was there which was to the liking of the queen because she just wants power and i pretty much helped all the rebel groups which wasn't uh, what the queen actually wanted from me but yeah this is pretty much what i did and then at the end you can tell your older brother whether or not you want um, you that you actually uh, wants to to become the new king after the uh, the mother dies she isn't dead yet but she is sick and um, then at the end everyone took that as a joke haha <laughs> you're so funny but did he really mean that something like that and so that's the um, the the choice I take now to start this let's play and the Nissa that was some other folk which um, uh, had some some curse over the empire and I think we ju I just killed them all or something but I had a dream which they put into my head which gave me more confidence or something like that so um, yeah all right Welcome to Queen's Wish 2. You can look around by dragging the terrain. First, you need to learn how to move around, select a spot on the ground. Yeah. Ah, yeah. One thing I changed in the settings is the shift terrain when cursor. No, this wasn't it. Auto scroll terrain. Yeah. Otherwise, every time you click, the camera moves automatically, but not smoothly, but just ploing, 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 and this is a bit annoying. So. You stumble half awake across the crude bedroom. Your rockage, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, probably like rockage, guide provide for you. It's all very rustic, far from the luxury you are used to back in the royal palace. It's the best you can expect from the row. The plan was for you and your brother, Prince Sutter, to hunt and rest for a few days before returning to your mother's unending list of missions. It's starting to feel painfully like actual work. But something is wrong. You hear shouting and fighting, normal sounds when you're in, in the hunt, but you are in the barracks. Alright, let me quickly reduce the sound, just a little bit of music. Open a door, box is selected, yeah, we can click on stuff and then um, open it for example. Unlike the, oh yeah, you have to scroll around with um, the left mouse button. You cannot do that with the arrow keys or with WSD that will actually move your character. The sitting room is where you came to rest after your hunts with Sutter. Dispatches from all over the empire weigh down the shelves in the corner, happily ignored. Your senses start to come into focus. Something is snarling on the other side of the door to the east. Fortunately, your ceremonial hunting blade is in the chest in the corner. It's not much, but it can sort of defend you. All right. So in the other Avernum games, you can switch to the inventory and then you have like the floor and have to drag and drop that into in your inventory. 
Queen's Wish is a bit simplified that you can see all the lootable objects directly on the map, like this chest, and this is also like sparkling. So I can just click on the chest and then this is a weapon and we will take that. The ceremonial blade feels cheap and flimsy in your hand. It is an honored and expensive weapon with a long glorious history. Your mother has you wear it everywhere to show the majesty of heaven or something like that. You suspect that using it to defend yourself from mysterious assailants was never part of her plan. All right, let's open the next door. When you enter this workshop, a skinny, snarling beast leaps out from behind the pillar. Much to your relief, it is only a car wolf. These pests are found throughout the known lands, wretched magical creations, parodies of humanity, but incapable of thought. When you meet them during when you met them during your miserable mission on Sacramentum, they were called Mayalings. Here, they are K wolves. New words to remember, same nonsense. Ah, we are getting attacked. Alright. So you're in combat, you're forced with each turn, with several action points. Yeah, 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 I will explain. So we have five action points and we can use an ability or we can just hit the enemy. Um, let's use an ability and uh, take the brutal blow. You're bleeding. All right. And we just hit it again. And again. Unfortunately, you cannot see the turn order. And okay. You can um, press that button to start and end the combat whenever you want, which is quite nice. Happily, the ceremonial blade stood up to the challenge of fighting this pitiful creature. Not that you were worried. Your mother has wizards constantly looking after the safety of you and your siblings from afar. You realize with a shudder that you aren't sure if they are watching now. Alas, this creature was not a one lone beast that snuck through your defenses. The sound of battle continues outside. All right. By the way, behind... Uh, let me quickly... Um, flip, flip. So just you see what's uh, here. There's a journal. And then we have the map, which is actually interesting. Um, and we are... No, this is for Meadow Quests, The Assault. Not sure if we are here. Ah, this is where we are. The very south. All right, cool. But you can see that it might be the same structure as the previous game. That you basically start in the middle and then you can go into three separate areas. Although this one might be like the end area then so that you go there 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 and they're basically in parallel and have their own like um biosphere with quests and so on and then um after you finish all that you go to the end that's my guess but i don't know and the last thing you can see here is the menu so um when i'm covering that you don't really miss anything. <laughs> All right, so let's quit. Ah, oh, there's actually. Let's go down. Ah, no. And let's go here first. Yeah, it's a bit annoying that you cannot move the camera with the arrow keys. But I don't think that there was. Yeah, there wasn't anything for that. I think in the previous games you might have been able to do that, but I think it was just possible with the arrow keys and not with WASD. But now we can't even do that with the arrow keys, so we have to either scroll at the edge of the screen, which is annoying, especially if you have two screens, or drag and drop, which can be done with the left air or the right mouse button. Of course, left, no, it's actually both mouse buttons are also used for for moving or use the middle mouse button <laughs> okay well either way uh, mouse button it is so uh copper bits and wood buckler we take that as well and that's it from this room let's go downstairs nothing in here let's go outside you are in port osborne a small plot of heaven's land on the south coast of the rokash 
Your workers carry goods and emissaries like you in and out of the Rokash. Important people like you feast here. On the other side of the great oak table you can see a young row warrior. He is wiry, strong and fearless in the way of his people. You meet his gaze. His features look strangely familiar. You see them in the vaguest way in the mirror every morning. And then he holds, raises his weapon and charges. To survive your character will need to use stuff. Alright, we can do that. Okay. So, um, let's move towards them, which takes up two points. And then we use an ability, this whirlwind, which does damage to everything up to two tiles away. No, actually it was just in the adjacent. Okay. I hope that I killed that one as well, but I didn't. Alright. Um, then... By the way, all of the abilities are using energy and I think every killed enemy is um, giving me energy back, which is uh, which is a nice thing and an issue of other spiderweb games that in some games you need to basically return to town after every fight, uh, for example in Bioforge, uh, Geneforge. <laughs> Um, and this is extremely annoying and in this case you can just uh, continue fighting if you didn't do too bad you have a sick feeling it's not killing this assassin this is not the first time you've killed you had to defend yourself many times in sacramento but this is no raider or brigand this is rebel the rokaj has a long history of rebelling against those who would try to control it the rebellions are bloody brutal affairs grim botches on history books it gets eerily quite outside. You feel a sudden need to find Sutter. Your brother stands to inherit the throne. He would be a valuable target. Maybe we should just have him killed to get uh, king ourselves. Another chest and... Okay. And these icons, they are just representing the strength of the object. So you don't need to compare like the damage and so on if you just look at that this should i think fit most of the time all right let's get outside press the gear button to save yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. oh i could just press a five let's go outside prince sutter Fortunately, it doesn't take long to find Sutter, your older brother, is standing just outside the hall, sword drawn, alone. Your royal guard is nowhere to be seen. He says, Good morning, Kodano. He doesn't look at you, though. His gaze is fixed on the gardens to the south. You hear people rustling around in the shadowy undergrowth. Good morning, Sutter. How are you? I'm glad I found you. Something is terribly wrong. Ah, I was just attacked. Let's choose the second one. Something is wrong. You aren't wrong. Someone is trying to kill us. Not ideal. I thought a few might have slipped past me into the hall. Glad you dealt with them. Maybe you can help me with these. He nods towards the trees. Where's your, our guard? North. I sent them to chase down some raiders who were running off. Didn't realize how many of them were still in the pot. Oh well. Who are they? Not sure yet? Assassins? A bit weak for that. Stupid brigands? Perhaps. We must find out how widespread the unrest is as far as we can, after we deal with the immediate business, of course. They are getting closer. You can see the faces of young rogue warriors, perhaps kin to the one you slew inside. You are approaching slowly. We should flee. They are approaching slowly. Some of them are rogue. We should try to spare them. Let's kill them! You should kill them. I'll watch your back. Some of them are rogue. We should try to spare them. Sata looks at you incred incredulously. Um, they tried to assassinate the royalty of heaven. Their lives are forfeit. Letting them live sends a very bad example to the world. Come out, uh, come on out, cowards! The raiders oblige him. Row warriors and car will spring from the bushes. And now we got um, recharged. But I think that's an exception. By the way, we can also, of course, drag and drop. Not drag and drop, but we can, yeah put the attacks in here all right so um three four i mean we can try to stay out of their range and for now this might actually be the better option so we just use the 
ranged attack here and we can um, swap that with the use of two points. So I'm down to three. But as long as you has, have at least one point left, you can still um, attack. All right. So let's approach them. No, that's not... Yeah, well, let's do that. Go there. We still have one point, so we can attack. All right. Oh. We could... Ah, uh, yeah. So, spots were blocked, so he's using another path. Bleh. All right. Block damage. All dead. As you look for more foes, a horn sounds. Your warriors march into the port from the north. They have seen battle, but they have suffered no losses or wounds. Sata hears their reports, and they dispatched several raiders and cave wolves, but the rest escaped to the northeast. Sata makes a chopping no motion with the sand and splits off three of the warriors to protect you. Then he takes a moment to think. We must speak, Kodano. Fast action is necessary. Mm, let me end the combat first. Mm -hmm. So now we got our party. Now that the nearby raiders are dead and the guards have returned, Sata relaxes. His arrogant swagger and infuriating smile immediately resume. He walks over to you and claps you on the arm. At least our wizard here won't be all royal feasts and boring speeches. Why are you smiling? We almost died. No, I don't think we had much to worry about from that rebel. The row has many truly fierce warriors. None of them were here. Still, we don't know how much of an uprising this uh, is, uh, happening, was, is happening. We have much work to do. Let's build up this port's defenses. Sata gives the halls of Port Ospon a disdainful look. Haven can live without this port for a while. No new ships are near. We must secure our fortifications and learn who attacked us and why. I have your orders. Where do you want me to go? Our guards saw a band of raiders fleeing to the northeast. I will hunt them. You must secure our defenses so that if we, can, if we face serious numbers, we have a place where we can survive. You need to move north to Fort Meadow the Fourth and make it ready. I have a better plan. What if I get attacked on the way? It's a bit silly that we basically start from cr scratch and we we are just a noob and we can't really fight. But I, uh, I mean, there isn't even a, tr a try of an explanation of why we lost l all our powers. Um, no amnesty or a amnesia or anything like that. So. I imagine you will kill your attackers. That is what I would do. Your guards will help. However, if you meet anyone on the road, you should consider keeping your distance. They are more likely than not to be a raider. I have a better plan. I'm sure you have a plan. Maybe this better. A little. However, I am the heir to the throne and our mother put me in charge. My plan is the plan. What is Fort Meadow for? It is the southernmost of Haven Force in the Rokaj. Close, neglected, but defensible. It should just need a little bit of patchwork. How do I get to Fort Meadow 4? Leave the port to the north. Don't worry about retaking the other buildings. They aren't worth the risk and you aren't prepared. Leave the port and follow the road north. Avoid strangers. When you get to Fort Meadow 4, our general will help you prepare our defenses. Who is in charge there? A familiar face. I believe General Miranda is there. I know you worked with her back on Sacramento. I arranged for her to join us in this final mission to the row. I'm glad I did. I, uh, her competence will be needed. I'm not exactly sure who Miranda was. And I think that's a name which is also used in the Avernum games. And I think that she was a great mage or something. But I might miss that, uh, mix that up. What do I do when I get there? Talk to General Miranda. I've already sent a runner with some quick orders. You will help her carry them out. Just go to Fort Meadow 4 and talk to her. What will you do? Run hard and fast. My warriors and I will go northeast, tracking the potion 
a portion of this enemy raid that fled. When we catch them, we have some questions. I have a different plan. Of course, and I'm desperately eager to hear it. Desperately. Just go to Fort Meadow 4 first, and I'll hunt down my clump of rebels. And then you can tell me about it. He parts, pats you on the head, and has a good laugh. Then he gathers up his warriors and runs off to the north. Alright, cool. Let's save uh, and have a look at our party. So I think we can completely customize and exchange them. I'm not sure how that is working or how that did work in the previous game, but I am pretty sure that you could do that. Um, because you get a like when you... Let's open the map for a moment. Like once one of these empire jo empires joins you, uh, you can get new um, new characters or create a new character with some racial traits from that faction. Like if we look at the skills, like the first three um, tabs are all the same and the last one has this cultural tab and they don't have the first thing while our main character has that because we are the, the royal prince and um, I think characters from the different factions also have their first, like they have something different in there. The other stuff is all the same, so I mean we are pretty much a warrior in that, but we can freely redistribute as soon as you're, we are in a haven, in a haven city, this one apparently is not secure. So we have some melee attacks, we have no magic, we have no support and we have no cultural. This one is as well just a fighter with a stunning shot. Shot, actually. Attack with your weapon. Melee or missile will stun your foe. Oh, okay, that's cool. No magic, no support, no cultural. Then we have um, a cleric, basically. And um, he got curing, healing, inspiring cry. And that's it. And the last one must be the mage, which got Ice Wave, Shock, and Terror. Alright, and of course the equipment will be accordingly, like she has a rope and some stuff. I'm not sure if you can attack range with that one. You probably can. Uh, I think so. Um, dagger and bow for the cleric, okay. And she got a bronze spear, no bow. Actually, she would need the bow, right? Because she's got this stunning attack, which would be super useful with a bow. So she's going to get that. And now we will first explore the map, which apparently isn't that huge. You are by the main customs hall of the port. The sailors and guards sleep here and all mer merchants have to check in to be inspected and pay customs. You never actually went inside. The port officials took you to their qu uh, quarters immediately. Through the open windows you can hear frenzied activity. Raiders are turning the place upside down. Barrels are being smashed and frenzied beasts are eating the mattresses. Someone will need to reclaim this port eventually. You start to feel nervous. As pitiful as these raiders are, you may not be uh, yet be properly supplied to fight them. Ah, Let's see about that. First, let's go into this corner of the map. Okay. Yeah, the zone is really not huge. That space is currently blocked. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. The ballista. Oh, okay. I oh, know this is also just an exit. You can see the colored um, tiles there. Oh, something to loot. Copper bits. And actually we got a shield. Which I think she cannot use. Yeah, okay. But he can. Yeah, the sound effect for the shield is a bit annoying. 
Haven's port has two storage sheds where your supplies are stored after they've been unloaded from the ships. The doors of the sheds covered with fresh claw marks. Some of the raiders have already snuck inside, looking to loot your goods. But nobody... Ah, there's... Uh... We can also press um, tap to get highlights and like all the character names are showing up and NPCs names and I hope also lootable items and yeah, enemies. Okay, let's start the combat here. And yeah, now she has the bow, right? And she can just directly use the stunning shot. Let's move forward just a little bit. Walk. Walk. Now she has one left, and then she can use the stunning shot. Batch. Ah, evaded. Alright. Well, it's quite a lot of damage. Okay, this was our healer. Um, let's use a heal. Alright. And... Blinding. Alright. And shock, strong magical damage on one foe, shamed area, causing now we want to kill them as quickly as possible. Okay. Ah, uh, this took all we had, okay. Um, bless everyone, yeah. Let's use the whirlwind attack. Okay, it has two range. And here we definitely need to... Ah, no, this was the wrong one. Shock. We need to try and heal Elspeth. So, yeah, that was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, stunning. Oh, that was a cleave attack, but I think that was more of an accident. Healing. Each weapon has some additional. Um, it's, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Each weapon I think has some. Um, like this one has a five percent speed bonus. Basic attack. I think some weapons have like a chance to cleave and whatnot. Um, yeah, basic spear, physical damage to fall near target with a 25% chance. So, what we got here? Apprentice rope, which is what she's got. This might be better than the leather vests. Ah, but it needs, um, arc like, tier 1 arcane gear, not enough magic skills to use. So this is basically something we can sell later on. I mean, this is the same item. Some copper. All right. I'm not sure if, like, we don't have a trash bag in this game, which is a shame, but you don't have that many, many items as you have in the other games because you're not looting everything lying on the floor. All right, so we are a bit um, damaged here. <laughs> um, let's try and at least kill them a little bit. Now the mana is empty. And there's one more. So this might be a bit more problematic now. Oh, there's actually three more. Okay. Um, yeah, let's wait for now. Space is just skipping the turn. And let's shoot at the wolf. Nice. And again, shooting at the wolf. And now, I mean, we can. Let's try that. The icy wave in a cone shaped area, but it's just not enough. All right. So let's go stay back and shoot. Nice. All right. And now we can do the same, but I don't want to get attacked by this one. 
So let's not do anything with that character yet. Okay. Forward and let's use the stunning. Stunned, slowed, critical. And similar here. All right. Brutal blow or can we blinding blow no he's stunned anyways so let's use oh, let's use the brutal blow mm. all right and shock all right attack and now we try to just cleave them away ah no she doesn't have a cleave so Let's just attack normally. I'm not sure if the cleave now will reach the other one. I will try it again. Yes, it does. Cool. All right. And we can probably enter that building as well. No, as you reach for the door into the trading hall, you hesitate. You may not be ready to handle this challenge yet, and your mother's protective spells may not be affecting you yet. But you can enter now, but this is a great risk. Obviously, we are going to do that. There are bloodstains and signs of battle inside the trading hall, but no bodies. The Heavenites must have evacuated when the raid started. If your warriors had remained, they would surely have destroyed the pitiful attackers who came here. The leaves, that leaves it to you to reclaim the port from whoever was foolish enough to stay here. At least it will provide you with a bit of battle practice. Months of diplomatic missions have left you out of shape. Ah, now there's the explanation. Not a good explanation, but an explanation nevertheless. <laughs> and there is a dock. And now, of course, we can just initiate the combat, even though we are still relatively far away. And there's also an enemy. All right. Um, no, we cannot hit from that. So we're going to do this. Same here. Can she... No, this is also too far away. So, um, I'm not sure. Can you actually ex exchange? Yeah, you can exchange characters. Okay, but now it's too late. I'm not going to do anything. And we will just, yeah, continue shooting. Oh, all right. That one should be better. Ooh, another one, all right. But now let's try the ice wave and we can hit all three of them. And yeah, that was very nice. Um, we can heal, so we have a, a little bit of um, energy again, but okay. Um, I think he might be attacked by everyone, so it might be a... I will, I will try it. Nine. All right. Forward. And let's try that again. Mm -hmm. And again, we go to the front let's exchange that one and use the icy wave nine okay exchanging her and uh, all right so he doesn't have any energy anymore but um, as soon, I ah, know, I think it's after the fight that you regain energy then. All right. So they're all dead, but there's still one enemy running around. So I will skip the turns because 
that enemy is going to probably walk back. Nope, it's not. So let's just carefully walk forward because I don't want to lose my advantage of the distance. Ah, okay. So he probably just walked all the way around and tried to, to attack us from behind. Okay. No problem. Still out of range, so... We should probably wait. Yeah, and now... Let's shoot him. Uh -huh. And he's dead. And with that we can end the combat. And we regained some of our energy. Oh, there's a different level. Oh, some more. Okay, so he will be able to attack right away. I shouldn't have changed that. Uh, let's change it back. All right. Okay. Um. Bleeding. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. That might be a little bit more problematic now. Mm, yeah, let's try to kill these first. Um. That's the main character. He's also almost dead. Okay, let's try that again and this time I should probably heal first. Mm -hmm. All right, maybe we should could also explore the other areas first. Maybe we find something which makes us super strong. Oh, we don't have the key. Nope. Okay, let's go upstairs. Mm. Oh. They're all evil. Okay, let's use the stun, oh, wrong weapon, stun, and in that case I will just shoot normally without using any special oh. thing, okay. So we need to fight as efficient as possible so that we don't use up all the healing um, options so that we can use them in the next battle and this is also a good reason for probably um, giving everyone oh giving everyone the healing spell so that um, remaining juice can be used for for healing mm. and there's someone else moving around I think
Pro Raider. Alright, but he is on some distance, so that's still fine. Mm-hmm. There's one more. Now he has to heal himself. Switch. Yep. Yep. And let's stun him. Uh, evade. Not good. Bleeding. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try that one again. Nice. Yeah, the spell is pretty strong. Mm, but he is out of mana now. Need another stunning shot. Yes, stunned. Uh, it's also not looking great. Um, yeah, no, this is not working. So you can see that the torment difficulty is indeed um, a little bit more difficult. <clears throat> The crate is full of letters and records, not surprising for one of Haven's ports. Paper is the fuel that runs the Empire. Laws, contracts, records. You search through them for a moment, but you don't find anything useful. It looks like someone dug through them recently. Uh -huh. But it's still a lootable object, so we might need to get back to it later if we have a quest. Alright, let's try to do that again. I mean, we know now know that there is someone, so we can properly prepare. And I should probably have done this a little bit differently. Either way, so we go there. Zip. And... Leave. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he will not survive. Ah, okay. Die! <gasps> so he still got full hit points. No. We need to get in with all the characters because that one is going to attack very soon. Oh. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try it again. Hmm. There, and now we use this attack. Yeah, that's by far the strongest attack I've got. I mean, that one's also nice, but... Ah, shit, I can't. Now if I switch back the weapon, um... Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to attack anymore. It would be nice 
if we Ooh. can yeah, finish the battle, then start the battle again, because now we got refueled, I wanted to say, but apparently we did not. Quick saved. Okay, we were not attacked immediately, but there we can see the next enemies. Ah, now we got... So there was a, a little bit of delay between the here. All right. Um, ah, damn. I think we can shoot from there as well, yeah. From here. Moved away. Can't do anything from distance. Die! All right, let's see if anyone approaches us. Nope. Ooh, Irud Nebar. Uh huh. Oh, weakness. It might be impossible to beat him. One of the Rukai raiders steps out into the hall to face you. He has no armor or weapons, though. He wears the robes of a mage with a wand and orb. You realize how little you knew about the row when you came here. For example, you didn't know that they had wizards. He points his wand at you. We stayed too long. We were wrong. We accept our fate. Wait, you are a row wizard? The man stands up, straight, stands up straight, deeply offended. Of course, we are not crude peasants, no matter what heaven thinks. We Roe must master all the arts of war. Who are you? I am Neba, Erud of the Rokaj, not the... of the Erudico, not anymore. You're an Erud? The Erudico? Pah! The Erudico think they are the true keepers of knowledge. They gain power, but they keep us weak. I am glad I won't be one of them when I die. You try to slay royalty of heaven, you must die. Why did you come here? We came here to learn Haven's secrets, and we came to kill you! We, the raid, was doomed to fail. But that is alright. This is only the beginning. How do you control the car wolves? The mage only smiles. What sort of secrets did you hope to find? We didn't know. Heaven holds all the magical secrets of the world. I hope that some of them could be found here. It is but another way we failed. Who sent you on your raid? Irut Nebka laughs. Uh, laughs. Oh, you will find out. It will be known. We failed to kill you. We failed to learn heaven's secrets. Now I will face my fate. He points. He's wounded you. Okay. Yeah, it's not possible to kill him with this group on this difficulty. So, um. <laughs> Now we will die and see what happens if uh, we die, when we die. Fear! Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, there are a few more. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was two enemy um, tiles. Uh. And with that, normally when you travel away from Avon's forts, powerful protective enchantments are placed upon you. Unfortunately, those tricky spells are hard to maintain and they are not on you at this moment. Thus, the Row Raider surprise assassination attempt results in a highly unlikely success. Alright, so <laughs> next time we will actually leave the starting area and travel north over the world map to the next encampment, the something for where we needed to go according to our brother. And yeah, we're going to see that in the next episode. So feel free to subscribe to not miss any of the new episodes. Also, I am uh, um, I'm happy if you can 
Leave a like and with that, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.